If you're getting into asynchronous messaging or CQRS with something like Mediator, you're probably gonna experiment with naming. How do you name handlers, commands, events, queries, and how do you organize them? I'm gonna explain three different strategies that I've used and which one I prefer. Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So in every video I've done about messaging or CQRS and I've illustrated code, I always get the comment of, how do you name commands, events, handlers? Do you suffix them? And how do you organize them? So the first example I'm gonna show, I think is the, probably the typical or most intuitive way that you'd probably do this. So I'm in a solution that has three different solution folders, and these are kind of divided for boundaries, purposes. I use this in my loosely coupled monolith as the example. So I'm just, I've renamed things a little bit here to kind of illustrate the three different ways. So this first way is what I think people would probably do, which is, I have a folder, this may not be typical, but I have a folder called features. And then within that, I have a folder that's gonna contain all the relevant things for that feature. The command, the handler, any events, they will all be one class per file within it. And then each relevant class will have a suffix for what it actually is. So I'm not revolving around CRUD, I'm revolving around commands and in this particular example, so I have this ready to ship order. That's my command. So for the actual command itself, I have a file that is exactly that name suffixed with command. So here's my actual command class. And then the handler for this class is named the exact same way. It's the ready to ship order handler suffixed. And here's my actual logic. And then I actually have this other one, this other handler here, which is shipping label created. This is an event handler for an event that is getting published from another boundary. But the reason it's here is because it ultimately is consuming that event and then just calling our ready to ship order uh, command. And we're sending that just in process. I'm just using in service bus as my example here. So this is probably the first way, which is suffix all your relevant classes or types, commands, handlers, events, and one file, one class per file and organize them within the same folder. So I think the next natural progression, at least it was for me, is to move all those particular classes into a single file. Now you're only gonna do this is if you think that this is okay or you're not completely against the idea or the notion of having more than one class per file, but you can. And I initially went this route uh, again until I landed where I am now, which I'll show next. But the idea here being is that I have this place order uh, command and this is actually exposed via a controller. So I have a place order controller. I also have the place order command here. Then I have the place order handler as well. And then I have some uh, data related to a saga and the actual saga itself within service bus. So now I've shifted instead of one class per file, I now have one file that represents that particular feature and it has everything to do with it in that one file. Again, this is only gonna work if you're not completely grossed out by the idea of one class per file. I am not as all at all, so initially I went this way. All right, so the next progression to that, which is what I generally do now, is I actually have a single file, but instead of having these ridiculously long names and doing everything with a suffix, I end up just wrapping this in a static class. So my static class, in this example, I have cancel order. That's my feature to cancel an order. And then within that, I just have the command handler. So when you're actually having to use these and actually write it out, you're just writing cancel order dot command if you need to create a new instance of it. Now, the you may be thinking, well, why don't you just do this by namespace? Instead, that we can just have command handler, and this could all be in the cancel order namespace but don't even go down this road. The using statements are gonna be completely gross depending on what commands you need to use. Um, I prefer, again, just to nest these in a static class. And so I have my command here and I have my handler. And then the next thing I'm gonna to get to now is there actually is an event uh, being used here, but it's actually need, need be, needed to be used in another context. So I'll show you right here. I have, once I cancel an order, I have an ordered canceled. So where I'm actually here is I actually have a separate project. And the reason is, is that this event, if it was only being used within my own boundary, I would put this event directly in this nested class, this static. But because this um, order canceled is being used by other boundaries, 
I generally create a separate project that's just going to contain shared messages. So events that need to be called from other boundaries, commands that need to be called from other boundaries. These are just DTOs. These are just my events and commands. So you can see I have a order canceled and an order placed, um, different events here. And these particular uh, projects, that's what's being referenced from my other boundaries. So shipping probably will reference the contracts project. It won't reference sales directly because it doesn't need any implementation details. It just needs these messages. So again, if you need an event just within your own boundary, I would generally put it right next to where it's being uh, published from. But if it's being consumed by other boundaries, I generally put it in this contracts uh, project. At the end of the day, it's really just preference. And my advice is consistency. If you're going to have a file per class and you're going to suffix everything with handler, command, event, controller, whatever, then just do that everywhere and organize it the exact same way everywhere. Um, I just felt that jumping around files was a little cumbersome for me. And because a command has one handler, I just would prefer them to be all the exact same file. And then hence why I nested them in a static class, uh, just to deal, not have to deal with namespacing issues. So again, it's really just about consistency. Whatever your preference is, guess that it's, it's your preference. So do whatever feels natural to you or based on what the project and how your project works right now, just be consistent. Last thing I have here is just to touch on the actual naming of things. And I've mentioned this in other videos before, but I want to touch on it again, is commands should be named with their actions. They're probably going to have some verb in it. So make sure you're naming uh, uh, commands that way of get away from the crud and what the actual action is. And in terms of events, an event is something that's occurred. It's going to be something in the past tense. So if, a, if you have a command that's like place order, you're probably going to have something. The output of that is going to be that an order was placed. Make sure you're naming your events in the past tense. The only thing I didn't really show here, which I have done in the past, is I haven't even used suffixes before for the exact reason that I'm describing. If you see, uh, for example, place order, well, you know that's a command. If you see something called order placed, well, you know that's an event. Why do you necessarily need the suffix? But I get people often do the suffix, so and I do as well in, in a lot of cases. Technically, it's not because it's in a nested class, um, static class, but you get the idea. So again, commands as actions, verbs, uh, events, something in the past tense. All developer level members of my channel get access to the source code that I just showed of this demo project and structure. If you're interested in joining, click on the join button in my channel. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions or want to let me know how you name or organize your commands and handlers and events, let me know in the comments. And please subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on software architecture and design.